Hi, uh, it's a pleasure to be talking to Worms again after five years. I think it's really cool that you guys kept it going. Uh, I am here to very briefly introduce uh, our pretty new OMR project because I think there is quite some opportunity for collaboration across the field. We have some resources, we can do something. Uh, maybe you will find it helpful. Uh, so this is why I wanted to introduce uh, what the project is. Basically, let's just search music libraries, right? For the M plus first time, this idea has been around for a long time. We do it with more data. That's that's it. That's the project, right? <laughs> okay. To give a little bit more detail, uh, we run. We started this year. We run until the end of twenty twenty seven. The goal is uh, full text search in diverse music scores. So we are not doing the thing which uh, Werner Google and David Weigel are doing where they're producing actual additions and have to be 100% accurate. We do the easy part where we don't have to be 100% accurate and it still might be useful. In the uh, it's based at the Charles University in Prague. So if you ever want to make a trip to Prague, this is this is like a reason uh, to get funding for it. And, for the, and with the Moravian Library who have a lot of music scores and actually came up with the idea to we have about four to six full-time equivalents to give you an idea of the scale. It's not tiny, it's not huge, but we'll get on. The inputs that we plan to work with look like this, or this, or that, this one, and more. Uh, I think it should be clear that the Moravian Library really has a quite varied music collection. Uh, we will be focusing on common Western music notation because that's the largest proportion of what they have and what also many other institutions have. And a lot of it is in manuscript form, which is why it's a research project, specifically an applied research project. It's also why the Ministry of Culture is funding it because the library is their institution and they want this done. Um, in terms of um, the systematic overview of, of uh, what... Uh, let's say dimensions of difficulty we are addressing. We are uh, being quite ambitious, I think on the input side of things based on what's in these collections. Uh, we want to deal with handwritten scores as well as typeset. Uh, we do not go too far into the preceding notations. We want to just utilize the tools that you guys have already been working on. Uh, thank you. Um, we do want to work with all levels of notational complexity. We have to work with documents of various qualities. Uh, in terms of the image acquisition, we are fortunate to work with library scans. So we don't have to deal with deformations. We don't have to deal with phone images, etc. Uh, so that's that's where we are. In terms of the outputs, uh, we will address metadata extraction. One of the major tasks is identifying in those collections whether there is even music notation because a lot or we think that a lot of music notation doesn't really have the appropriate metadata for instance a lot of music was published in the 19th and 20th centuries in various periodicals and these are not marked as scores but still they represent a really important segment of musical culture at that point in time and space uh, so a lot of researchers are kind of itching to get their hands dirty with this material. Uh, well, a lot. Five, which is a lot in Czech musicology. Uh, but uh, this is a task which is basically just binary classification, right? Has music, doesn't have music. But it has quite severe computational constraints. There are about 10 million pages that we have to scan for music notation, and uh, since we don't expect too many of them to contain some music, we have to be really, really precise. Something like one tenth of a percent is an adequate uh, error rate, uh, well, uh, adequate precision uh, error. Uh, so every percentage point that we lose on precision means that there's 10 times as many junk as, as interesting pages. So this is this part of the project I'm actually scared of. Uh, that's that's the difficult part, I think. But fortunately, music notation has such a clear visual identity that maybe it's actually doable. We have a P new PhD student working on this, and so far he hasn't quit. Uh, 
we do want also to classify the music notation that gets detected. This can be a little slower. This can be the, the next step or not. We'll see whether the error propagation issue actually is serious here or not. Uh, because we want to have different OMR models downstream, right? We don't necessarily want to have the model that deals with piano form notation, which can have a lot of edge cases, and I'm sure many of you are aware. We don't want to necessarily apply this model to relatively simple monophonic scores, violin parts, etc. Uh, it's kind of an overkill. It also drains computational resources. It, it can introduce a lot of false positives. Uh, and for the non-common Western music notation, uh, we want also to be able to leverage those different tools, right? There are some chant books, there are some mensural scores in the collection. So for this, uh, we have to classify like which model, which tool chain should be applied. Okay. Uh, so once we have this kind of overview of what page, what document we are looking at, we actually want to search in it. So we have to do uh, your regular OMR up to some level. We do need to recover basically these pitch duration onset triplets uh, to have the sequences of, of musical notes to search in. Uh, but we do not necessarily need the actual semantics, right? For just for search. Uh, we just have to make this extractable from semantic user input, right? Like the music on interface from the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek. So we will likely go with the agnostic encoding. Uh, Jorge is happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, there, there again. Or perhaps it will turn out that search uh, on the level of just melodic contours is going to do fine. So the best part of this whole project is data. We cannot do this with the data sets that OMR currently has. We have to annotate more, and we will. Uh, so you know Musima++, plus plus, that took about 10,000 euros to make. It's 140 pages. It's kind of useful so far. Uh, I mean, you know better than me. Uh, now we have eight times as much uh, money for creating annotations. So uh, I really hope, I, I think this is going to be the most important thing to come out of the project for the field, right? Uh, the goal is to get a thousand pages marked. Uh, we will work with kind of the music notation graph, at least that's our point of departure. Right now we're at the stage where we are experimenting with what the output should be. And this is also one of the major reasons why I'm here. Uh, I want to talk to you about what the output should be so that it's actually useful, so that it's future-proof, because nobody knows when the next time that we get almost 100,000 euros to create OMR ground truth, right? So this is this is important. Uh, uh, yeah, we will be using a commercial application for this. Uh, some of you look properly traumatized by images such as this. <laughs> Uh, rest assured, our annotators will soon join your ranks. Uh, but we will, we might work for, so for some images, we want the full graph because those should serve as kind of the goals and ground truth as evaluation downstream. And those are images we really want future proof. Uh, then others might not be annotated in as much detail because in order to get the agnostic quote unquote representation, uh, we basically only need uh, note heads and staff lines. And that's it. If we discard durations, we only need those two quite prominent symbol classes. Uh, so Labelbox was kind enough to grant us the academic free license we can work at scale there. They have some automation inside. It will be nice to compare notes with Itch's workflow to see like what kind of automation, what kind of active versus strategic learning uh, it gives uh, greatest benefit. And also we are going to rely heavily on synthetic data. I think Jonas will tell you a bit more about this uh, later in the day. Uh, yeah, we 
do aim to explore also style transfer while retaining the annotation content because it's actually, I think, a better idea to force the input image to become similar to your training data if you get something out of distribution than to have to retrain your model to take care of this uh, out of distribution part. Uh, but this is just an idea. Uh, if uh, I don't think we really have too many resources to, to research this. So if any of you want to take this up as a topic, uh, let us know and we will gladly uh, explore this with you. Uh, so this brings us to the possible collaborations that I see here and feel free also to come up with other ideas. Uh, first of all, coordinating the data set ground truth. Uh, second, we can annotate your data too. It's interesting to us to have annotated a broad battery of test cases. I think it's a good idea for OMR to have this, if only for us to be able to advertise, like this is what we can do, this is what we cannot do, right? If somebody comes and asks, can OMR do this? It would be nice to have numbers. So if you have some uh, ground truth that you want to annotate, especially for evaluation, let us know. We can maybe put it in the workflow. Uh, the synthetic data uh, generator, it does have an open architecture. Uh, you can contribute to that and you can utilize everybody else's contributions to that, hopefully. Uh, we do plan to offer also the search and indexing service that it ingests. Uh, this is more for the librarians out here. Uh, we hope to be able to ingest your corpus, spend some compute on it, and make it available uh, together with all the other collections that we have ingested to enable stuff like, I don't know, anonymous composition ID, right? So one collection has a composition and they lost the title page, so they mark it as anonymous. A different archive has a, a manuscript copy of this. They haven't lost the title page. They don't know about each other. But once both of these archives ingest their stuff into our index, then suddenly it's possible to find out, ah, this composition lives over there in Uppsala, maybe, and there it has a title. And uh, we have an ongoing user study uh, where we talk to different stakeholders and try to figure out what they actually want from this search part, what user interfaces should be a priority. If you want your priorities or your librarian friends' priorities uh, to be baked into the system design, then again, talk to us. Okay, uh, and also, can we please use your software for the chant and Manzuru stuff? <laughs> That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Jen. Uh, we have time for one question. And then, as I said, again, you have the session. Uh, so we'll have more questions then. Yeah. yeah thanks very much. It's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, just for understanding, before you go, like, working on the processing part, the organization detection, investigation, and so on, and bring data. Uh, how much is Actual ARCO and R research in the methods part. This is like the project to enable future and R research or to do that on your own. It's applied research. We have to make it work and actually put it into production, right? The library, fortunately, is the one responsible for putting the search interface and the database stuff that has to go behind that into production. We are responsible for making this OMR detection and recognition service. So it will run. I'm not sure how much compute we will be able to dedicate to it on, on an ongoing basis, like freely. For demo purposes, yes. At scale, hard to say. But yeah, we, we want to make this run. But it's not, we don't foresee too, man, too much like groundbreaking um methods research it's more about taking the methods that we already have like uh what i'm not supposed to call calvo's method and Bacchus method and and uh trying to scale them to library scale practice let's say 